Hey, what's going on, everybody? I hope you're having a great day today. It is Monday. I know that's the worst day of the week. Everybody dreads a Monday. Had had to head back to work and you know, slave to the man. But you know, it's it's great. It's a beautiful day today. We jumped from being about 15 degrees over the weekend to in the 60s now today. So it, it's great. All the ice is melting. I'm having a good day. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you had a great weekend. I know I did. That being said, let's just get into it. I want to touch today on a video that the Linux cast put out last week. Um, this isn't a, I'm going to bash Linux cast video. This isn't a, you know, that video's wrong, Matt's wrong, whatever. Great channel. If you're not a subscriber to the Linux cast, um, which I'm sure most of, you are, most of you are because his channel is much bigger than mine and I'm sure most of you guys have seen his channel or are subscribers to his channel. Um, but if you aren't or if you haven't, again, that's the Linux cast. The guy's name is Matt. Great videos, great content. Recommend you check it out. But he put a video out about scratch pads on i3 and how natively they don't work very well when you have more than one. Um, my thoughts on that are I don't agree with it. Um, again, this isn't bashing his videos. This is just me saying I have multiple scratch pads on i3 um, with no issues whatsoever. Um, he was talking about a program called i3 Run. Might be a spectacular program. I've never tried it, so I'm not going to have anything to say on that right now. Um, I just kind of wanted to go over my i3 configuration and um, how my scratch pads seem to work perfectly fine with multiple uh, instances. So, that being said, I'm not an i3 user. Um, I used i3 for a short bit before when I first started getting into Window Managers. Um, I don't dislike i3, I just don't use it, mainly because it eats my battery alive on my laptop. I can't seem to get any battery life out of it. I thought it had something to do with i3 blocks and maybe something running for too often in the in the status bar. So I killed the status bar, that didn't, didn't change anything. I mean, my fans just go nuts when I'm running i3, if I have it on for any extended period of time. So I just don't use it. Um, will I look into that at some point? Absolutely. Um, is it going to be anytime soon? Maybe. I don't know. Um, am I going to switch to i3 anytime soon? Probably not. But again, great window manager. A lot of people like it, and for good reason. Um, I'm just not one of those users. However, this right here that I'm booted into that you're seeing on the screen is i3. Um, this is my i3 setup. I had i3 on my Arch setup, so basically what I did is I reinstalled it on my Void setup, and I pulled my um, config file down from my uh, GitLab. Um, I made a few changes to it, so it's been pushed and changed, so I'm going to actually open up my i3 config here in just a minute, and we're going to go over a few things, um, but it is on my GitLab if you, or GitHub if you are interested in checking it out. Uh, that being said, let's kind of jump into what I want to cover on the video. Um, in all reality, this is my uh, i3 um, configuration file. So, in all reality, my main, and I'm not even going to say problem, the main thing I have with installing programs to solve problems is I prefer to solve problems natively. So if there is uh, uh, you know native support on a window manager for something, but it doesn't look for, or doesn't work very well or whatever, I try to find ways to actually still use it without having to install more programs on my system. A lot of people don't care. I'm not saying it's wrong to install more problems. That's just me personally. I'm kind of in the mindset with my whole Linux system is. I want it to be mine. So if I want it to be mine, it's not really mine if I'm just downloading a bunch of other people's programs onto my system. If I've got an issue or if I have a, um, a problem with something or if I want some functionality that's not in something, my first go-to is trying to do it myself. Trying to do it with a native, what I've got natively on the, on the machine already, trying to do it with writing a script, um, just trying to do it myself and getting it on there before I install somebody else's program. Again, I'm not saying installing other people's programs is bad. I've got plenty of other people's programs on my system. I just try to do it myself first because I'm in that mindset of kind of one of the reasons I have Linux is to be able to have control over my system. And I know part of that is being able to install whatever you want, i.e. other people's programs, but also part of that is actually taking the initiative to just do it myself. Um, I'm learning enough to where if I come across something that I want, some functionality that I want, some problem I'm facing, um, I'm not scared to dig in and try to make that functionality myself. That being said, i3 has scratch pad support and it's got pretty darn good scratch pad support in my opinion. I haven't had any issues. Now Matt has had some issues. I'm not saying there aren't issues that could arise. Um, so that being said, if he had issues and i3 run was the way to go for him, that's awesome. I just wanted to kind of show you, walk through my i3 config and show you how I manage multiple scratch pads on i3. Now again, I'm not using i3 so I actually, I, these, these scratch pads that I have on here now are just kind of 
generic. I threw them up there just for demonstration purposes, but I've kind of messed around with them for the past few days, goofing off, making sure that things actually worked and they seem to work fine. So here we are. Um, this is my i3 config. Um, you can see by my little design up here, it's i3. Um, I just kind of put that up at the top of the screen. Um, and then right here we have this uh, area called sections. And what I've done to make my config a little more user friendly, uh, so like I said, it's on my GitHub and GitLab. If you want to use it, go over there, grab it, pull it down. Um, this is on there. Um, I just made this little table of contents up here that kind of helps you if you want to edit or modify or change anything, you can look for whatever you want to change. So if you want settings or font or mouse or whatever. So we've got section one is settings, two is font, three is mouse, four is terminal, five is scratch pads, you know, kill, all the way down this. So right at the top, you're going to have this list that's numbered and gives you a section and what's in that section. Well, if you scroll down here, you can see like line 32 here is just a uh, pound sign or hashtag and then a long string of dashes. Well, if we jump to the end of that string, you can see I've got a number and that's number one. That means that's the first section, which the first section would be settings. So in that first section, the settings are going to be like your modifier key, um, your terminal, your browser, stuff like that. Well, if we again jump to the end of lines here. And you see we got three, we've got four, we've got five. Um, so each section is labeled at the end of these longer lines. So that way it's easier to find. You can, if we zoom out real quick, you can kind of see maybe in the video, this is kind of dark, but you can see I've got one, two, three, four. This will help you find the sections. So if you're looking for something to change and edit, you can just do that a little easier. That's all that is. Nothing spectacular. I just kind of wanted to cover that for you in case you decide, somebody decided they wanted to use my, uh, my config. Um, that being said, let's go ahead and jump down here. So in this section here, I have my scratch pads. You can see it's labeled right here as scratch pads and I have a scratch pad for the terminal and I created a scratch pad for NCMP CPP and I created a scratch pad for Ranger. So let's go ahead and launch those real quick just to show you that I have three scratch pads and all three of them work just perfectly fine. So for the first one, the terminal, we press mod control return. As we see right here, the bind sim mod control return is going to execute kitty and the name of the scratch pad is drop down. So I want you to be aware though what, what happens when I press this. So we're going to do mod control return and you see nothing happened, right? Well, that's because that basically initiates the instance of that drop down. That says, okay, let's turn that drop down on and activate it. Then, if we look right underneath it, we have bind sim mod plus return. So we're going to hit mod key plus return, and you can see now I have a scratch pad that opens and closes, opens and closes, and it's a terminal. So I have a terminal that I can just call on, do some typing, pull it out of sight. Oh, I need to type again, pull it in. So anyway, that's the first one. <clears throat> I have my terminal. Next one, like I said, I just created a couple here. I've got NCMP CPP. I don't have that set up on my system at all, um, but I just created it just to have another different uh, different look. So that one, if we look here, we've got bind sim alt mod. Well, let's go up here real quick, and you can see I've set alt mod to mod four, which is the super key. I don't usually use the super key, but just for this example, um, I have NCMP CPP set up. So we're going to do bind sim alt mod, which is super key plus control plus return. The same thing is going to happen. It's not going to launch, but it's going to it's going to activate the instance of it. So once we've activated it, then we can press the bind sim alt mod return. So we're going to do alt mod, which is again the super key plus return. And it's going to show NCMP CPP. So again, here's the regular modifier plus return. That is my terminal. Now, if we do windows key plus return, that is NCMP CPP, NCMP CPP. So NCMP CPP terminal. No problems activating both of those at the same time, pulling them to the front. So again, no issue there. So we now have a third one. I have Ranger, my file manager setup. That's set to bind sim alt mod, which again is the Windows key, plus shift, plus return. So let's press the Windows key, plus shift, plus return. Again, nothing happened. It is just activating that instance. It is getting it ready and saying, okay, you can go ahead and use that. And then we have alt, alt mod, which is the Windows key, plus F, set to launch an instant called Ranger, and it will toggle Ranger. So let's press the Windows key, plus F, and you can see I have Ranger brought up right there. So let's toggle that out, toggle it back, toggle it out, toggle it back. We've got this brought up, we've got this brought up. So then we can close them out and we can bring them back if we do the mod shift enter and then that we have it back up, have them all up, 
again all these scratch pads they all work just fine um, so again let's launch them all I've got the terminal which is gonna be mod return we have NCMPP CPP, NCMPCPP, which is going to be the Windows key plus return. And then we have the Windows key plus F for the file manager. It says toggle them out of view. No problems whatsoever. <clears throat> right? So that's that. So now let's go down to the bottom. This is That's just the key binds to actually activate them and call them. Let's go down to the bottom and see what we've done. Basically, all we have to do in I3 is we have to do some window rules. So, for the drop down, which is the first one for my terminal, you just have to create some four window rules. So, for window, and then the window instance of drop down, which is that first one, we want a floating enable. Yes. For window instance drop down, we want to resize and we want to set it to 1000 pixels by 600 pixels. For window instance drop down, we want to move scratch pad. And for window instance drop down, we want a border pixel of 5 that's all you have to do and then for scratch we have instance scratch we're floating enable again we've resized it to 500 and 500 we've moved scratch pad which just tells it it's the scratch pad so you can launch it in uh, um, and hide it and show it and then we have border pixel 10 and then down here we have four window instance ranger floating enable four window instance ranger resize at 1200 and 400 four window instance ranger move scratch pad and border pixel 8 and that's it. That's all you have to do. You can create as many of these as you want with as many key bindings as you want because all you have to do is create window rules for them down here. And then back up here, we just uh, create the key binds to activate and call the scratch pads. That's it. That being said, that is all you have to do to have multiple scratch pads up and working. And for me, honestly, I had them up when I was doing a march and I had multiple scratch pads, didn't have any issues. Again, I didn't use i3 for very long just because it it wasn't very great on my battery. And so, um, yeah, you can have multiple instances of scratch pads working without any problem, without installing other programs. Now, again, like I said, that i3 run might be great, might be the way to go. I don't know. I haven't used it. If that's it, great. If you want to use that, great. I just wanted to provide you with what I do and just kind of another idea and another option of what you can do natively with i3 as opposed to having to install somebody else's program. Now, again, if you're having problems and i3 run solves that for you, great. Go ahead and go that route. So that being said, that's what I wanted to touch on on this. I also wanted to go, let's jump to another workspace here because like I was telling you, I had an issue with i3 burning through my battery. And so I thought, well, maybe it had to do with the bar. So what I did was I I, first I started I killed my bar and just didn't use one at all and but that kind of got to be a headache as I was playing around with it for a couple days trying to watch my battery and watch this other stuff and see what was going on um, and I couldn't really it, I'm not gonna say I couldn't work with it because I could it was plugged in you know it wasn't an issue but um, I'm used to having that bar there and just being able to glance up at the time and some you know and, and my my Wi-Fi at my house kind of sucks at times so just trying to verify my signal for the Wi-Fi depending on what room I'm in and you know, obviously battery life which I have set to notify send so it will give me notification when it gets real low but I just I still kind of like to keep an eye on that but anyway without the bar up there it was just kind of a nuisance having to constantly go into the terminal and type in whatever you know I have scripts to run everything through notify send so I could look at things but so what I did is I created another script so let's launch the terminal let's clear the screen and let's zoom in and I'm gonna CD into my dot local scripts file and I'm gonna do an LS and if you look right where are you uh, right here bar toggle dot sh this is a very very simple very very stupid very very my five-year-old kid could have written this script type of script but it is very handy for me so let's go ahead and vim into bar toggle and just look at it real quick and basically what it is, is I've created the variable here that's basically just looks for bar and it says pit of polybar so it checks if there is a polybar instance running if there is not a bar running so if you run that and you get a result of less than one which I really could have just put less than a hundred or whatever because the the PID is usually a pretty high number but I just put if you have a number of less than one which means it's not going to give you a number at all then what it's going to do is it's going to run timeout 10 seconds polybar and run my main bar herbs configuration on polybar and if it isn't less than one, it's basically going to kill the instance of polybar that is running. So let's go ahead and go back over to my i3 config. And actually, no, it was in my um, uh, it was in my simple X hotkey daemon. So let's quit out of there. Let's cd into dot config. 
um, CD into Simple X Hotkey Daemon, and then we're going to Vim into Simple X Hotkey Daemon RC. And if we scroll over here, you can see I got Super Shift B set to launch my dot local scripts bar toggle.sh so basically if i'm sitting in here in i3 i've got no bar up or anything like that basically and i was like oh shoot i need to check my battery or i want to check my wi-fi signal if i hit the windows key plus shift plus b i get a poly bar instance that pops up it shows me my battery life shows me what my wi-fi is and it shows me the time and date and it gives it up to me for about 10 seconds or so and then it automatically just shuts off and goes away that way my bar isn't there at all times running my battery down um, constantly running constantly being a distraction anything like that but I can show it when I need it and it pops up for a couple seconds and it goes away that being said the other you know it said um, if there is not a bar it'll pop it up run for 10 seconds and then show it and then disappear well if I do B and then B again it sees there's an instance there and then it will kill that instance see it lasted less than 10 seconds so it will kill that instance so if I run it and then I just want to kill it right away again I just hit that key binding again and I don't have to wait the 10 seconds for it to shut down on its own but again if we do go back into our dot local scripts vim into bar toggle .sh again it just runs it checks for the pit of polybar if the if it's less than one then it runs timeout 10 seconds polybar main bar herpst and then it kills the polybar if you already have one running so again let's go ahead and take a look at that in action so if we do ma or super shift b my polybar shows up it's up there for about 10 seconds roughly give or take um should be exact but uh <clears throat> goes in there and we are now done so Again, just a simple way to run scratch pads in this video, kind of show you that it is possible to run multiple instances of scratch pads in i3 without issues and without an out external program. And also that if you want to have a bar but you don't want to have it visible all the time, you can make a really, really, really simple, uh, simple script that, like I said, a five-year-old could make and you can have your bar become visible and invisible if you're running polybar and toggle it on and off with just the press of a key binding. So that being said, that's all I wanted to cover today. I hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of your week and God bless.